Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to use D365 batch jobs. So batch jobs are extremely useful for processing reoccurring tasks in the background. They make it so you can run some process. You don't have to wait for it to finish. Maybe it's going to take 30 seconds. Maybe it's going to take two hours for a particular process to run. A batch job is really phenomenal in that it makes the server do that work um, so you don't have to wait for it. Um, so in a couple other articles, I shared how we write batch jobs in X++ code. Specifically, there's this one here called create a D365 batch job. And then um, similarly, there's an article on how to create sys operation frameworks, batch jobs in D365. These are still batch jobs. They're just written a little differently using a little different um, base class in X++ code. But in this article, I wanted to look at um, the functional aspects of how do we use batch jobs to improve our business, make um, our workers more effective. And this is actually going to be a series of articles and, and videos because this is a really large topic. So this first one's just really on the basics of running a batch job. Um, and one thing that many people don't realize is that you can run a batch job not just for things that need to be reoccurring or you know large chunks of data you can run it even for an operation that you're only ever going to run once um, but you'd like to run you don't necessarily need it to see the output and you want to keep working so a, let's start with an example a really great example is the sales order invoice so you know many many users are going to use the sales order form um, after they uh, complete their sales order and they pick and their pack and they need to invoice their sales order they're going to come into the sales order um, in this case I'll click on this open order right here um, in my demo environment, I'm going to go up to this invoice tab and then go to generate invoice to invoice this sales order. Now, uh, as part of the invoice sales order, it's going to do a lot of things. It's going to update financials. It's going to print out a report. Um, if I've got that selection sent to print, oftentimes it'll email the invoice to the customer and I don't actually need to see anything for the invoice sales order. All I really care about is that it did run. And so rather than having a user click invoice, wait the, you know, maybe 30 seconds for a larger sales order to run um, and then do that again over and over again, um, it makes a lot more sense to have a batch job that either individually invoices these sales orders or in groups and then just lets me know if there were any problems. So let's take a look at that. So I've clicked the invoice button. The first thing we need to do is make sure that our selection criteria and parameters are correct. I'm gonna change this to select all quantity and not just the quantity that has been packed. And now I can see my little warning goes away and I've got some sales lines. Um, the other thing I wanna point out is there's this select button on this particular form that shows us what criteria we're invoicing. So in this case, we'll see that we're only picking a particular sales order number, and that's fine. I just wanna invoice this one, but you can run this same process um, for a whole group of sales orders. You could pick all sales orders that are in a particular status um, and then add more criteria from there. So I'll go ahead and hit cancel on this because I didn't make any changes. So the piece that I really want you to see at this point is these buttons here at the bottom. I actually have a couple different options. I can click OK, and that may be what most users are used to. If I click OK, the system is going to invoice this sales order, and it's going to hold the screen until I'm finished. And so I wouldn't be able to do anything else with this browser window until the sales order has finished. Um, that's oftentimes what we want, but with many processes and not just this one, uh, we can use batch processing to offload that wait time to the server and allow us to keep moving. 
So in this case, the way I know that this process can run as a batch job is I actually have this batch button. So that's one key to recognize batch jobs in the system is look for this batch button. So I'll go ahead and click that. The next thing is you'll actually note that there's many um, other menu items that are batch jobs in the system. The thing to look for is this radio button right here. When it says batch processing um, or uh, run in background, um, that keys you into this being a batch job. The most important step that we need right now if we want to offload this to the server is to check this radio button. We'll set it to yes. This means um, don't run this process in my local browser, but run it in um, the server and upload the stat, you know, update the status on the batch jobs form table behind the scenes. I can change this task description if I want to um, be able to find it later, or I can just come down and click OK. There's a lot of other functionality with batch shops that I won't cover right now. I just want to give you the basics. I'll cover this in kind of the next video. Um, so uh, here I could run this batch job as a recurrence, but that really wouldn't make sense for a sales order that I'm just uh, have the criteria set up to invoice this one sales order. The advantage that I really want to get across is that I can do even a one off process that I'm only planning on running one time as a batch process. So I can click OK and then immediately this is going to take this back to um, the system and run it as a batch job and allow me to keep working. So I'll go ahead and click OK and um, we'll keep working on the rest of my sales orders. This has at, been added to a batch queue and now I can go back to my main list of sales orders, keep finding ones that I want to add to the batch queue. Later, once that batch job actually runs, which should be uh, pretty quickly, I could update this screen and see if this has actually been invoiced or I could go to the batch jobs form to see all of the batch jobs that I've added. And I'll cover that more in the next lesson. So now you've seen an example of how we run you know, a process in the browser, as well as how we would run a particular process um, in batch on the server. So this is one great example, but what about uh, where in the system are all of the other batch processes we can run? Well, I couldn't find a specific list where Microsoft documents all of the batch processes um, in the system, but I did find this article. It's really great by Kurt um, Hetlevik, and he wrote this article on batch jobs and in it, he actually lists a whole bunch of batch jobs, more than 87 batch jobs. He specifies their names and the menu items of where you can find them and some short descriptions of what they do. He categorized these into a variety of different um, groupings. He called some of them, if I scroll back up, uh, system and administration batch jobs, data management batch jobs, general ledger batch jobs, procurement and sourcing batch jobs, sales and marketing batch jobs, retail batch jobs, inventory batch jobs, and warehouse management batch jobs. And if you look through his article, which I've linked um, in, in my article, you can actually see his uh, details on the menu pass and descriptions. Now, this article was written a couple of years ago, so this may not be entirely up to date, um, but this is a great place for any user or worker to uh, look through and see if there's any processes that you are doing on a regular basis that maybe you don't need to be waiting for, that you can offload to a batch process, offload to the server to run, and then instead of um, always waiting for those uh, processes to finish in the browser, we give those to the server 
and then we really just manage those batch jobs when there's an exception, when there's an error. And in the next article, I'll show you how we can um, look at those uh, alerts, and then even in a future video, how we can use workspaces to monitor um, jobs that have errors and really just uh, work on the ones that ha have um, failed or other errors in their system. So that's what I have for this video. Hopefully you've learned something new. This is really just the start. Please check out my next set of videos. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.